Today I'm with Todd Garishik, and he is a life coach for men, specifically helping men take empowered action. And I have uh, been a client of Todd's uh, myself, and I really enjoy his coaching. He's an excellent coach. Uh, Todd is also a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group, and so it's great to be able to work with him in these different ways. Todd, thank you so much for doing this interview. All right. Thank you, George. I'm really happy to be here today. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. So um, let's talk about, uh, first, I want to ask you, you focus on working with men. And what do you feel is the difference between, uh, you know, why, why the focus on men? Maybe I'll ask you that question. Yeah. Um, the focus on men is just a result of my own journey. Mm -hmm. And I have spent over 15 years in men's work. And I did my own personal work, my own journey. Um, so I feel I have insight and I have something to offer other men um, from all the things that I've learned and from the places I've been and, and how it's all come together. I have coached women as well, um, but it's just uh, a passion of mine to help men be the best that we can and show up strong in the world to just make a great place for our families, for our communities, and for the world in general. Yeah, awesome. And given that there are a lot of women watching this and men as well, um, how might the women, uh, you know, given that they might know some men in their lives that could be great um, as clients for you or working with you, uh, what kind of men should they be looking for in terms of whom to refer to you? What, what's, what's going on with, with the men that uh, is a signal that, you know what, they could really benefit from the kind of thing you do? Yeah. Um, the men that uh, I focus on working with generally lack some sort of inward confidence. Now, most people aren't going to be able to tell that, right? I mean, a guy's not going to go around with the sign that says, hey, I have no confidence. But what happens is potentially the man is having difficulty in making decisions or the man mm, has difficulty speaking up and asking for what he wants, right? And in these types of situations, uh, I have found that it's either fear of something generally in the past or a limiting belief um, that is self-sabotaging the man to move forward in his life. Um, and so I help them. Basically, we identify those fears and beliefs. We work through that and then identify steps that move the man forward in his life in the areas that he's interested in building and making better. Yeah, awesome. And um, it's, you know, in some cases, men might appear confident in one area of their life and less so in another area. So, for example, you know, um, when I came to you for coaching, you know, in my business, in my work, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, you know, I, I know how to ask for what I want, et cetera. I know how to make decisions. In my relationship, in my closest relationship, you know, with my wife, it was it was less so. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, that's what we worked on is on that relationship. And so, I like that. Um, you know, just just to let people know that uh, you work with people in, in these in different areas, but it's really about, like you said, the confidence, decision making, showing up um, as a kind of thoughtful man. Yeah. So, you mentioned like limiting beliefs and uh, some of the things that, are, you know, the inner, inner stuff that's holding men back. Talk to us about that a little bit. Like what, what have you seen are, are kind of common and how can we start to resolve that? Yeah. What I've seen is there's usually a wounding event that took place during childhood. Hmm. And the wounding event often was not intentional by the parent or the peer or the person in uh, the young, the, the person in the man's life when he was a boy that intended to do it. But what happens is an action happens, an event happens, and then we as men will attach a meaning to that. We as boys will attach a meaning to that. Um, I'm not good enough. Mm, in order to be loved, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, I'm not important. And what happens is we learn to survive with that belief. So it's a belief that we attached. We gave meaning to the event. It's not true. Um, but as a kid, 
with limited emotional breadth and resources, um, that's what we did. And so we move forward in life of figuring out how to survive, how to make my parents happy, how to function in the family dynamic, how to function in the world in general. And maybe that uh, action uh, manifests itself as, well, I can't ask for anything, right? So I mean, let me, it, yeah, let me ask you, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I wonder, is that childhood wounding event um, like still remembered by by your by your clients um it well maybe yes. maybe it is maybe it is but by, by most clients uh for example uh, you know i don't remember a specific childhood wounding event and i'm sure there were <laughs> probably many i don't know yeah um you know i i can remember some bullying at school or whatever but um but yeah what, what do you what do you say to that is, is it is it necessarily a memorable event or is it just overall the, the relationship that the child had with the parent? In, in almost all cases, we can track it back to an event where the belief became attached. Now, you have a very good point. Men don't walk around thinking, oh, when I was 10 years old, someone took my ice cream from me, and that meant I'm no good, right? That's not what's going on. But what happens is... And, then, and perhaps we, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but maybe we men are better at pushing away uh, sort of thoughts and stories that we don't want to, to think yeah. about. And so, you know, I, I don't know, but yeah, like, like I can't remember a specific childhood wounding event, but like I right. said, I'm sure there were many, you know, right. I'm sure I could keep going back and, and trace, trace, trace it back. But yeah. Right. Well, you bring up a great point, George, because this is the deal. When men come to me, it's not they come to me because, hey, I need to figure this thing out that happened to me when I was 10. They come to me because I'm having difficulty in my relationship. You know, my wife does this and I do this and I just have this reaction or I'm at work and my colleague does this and I do this and it's not getting the man where he wants to be. And so what happens is there is something that happens in our adult life that creates a feeling. And that feeling is the exact same feeling we had back at the wounding event. So the reaction, the response is not from what's happening right now today. The reaction or the response is, is being generated from the emotional trauma or, or wounding that we experienced and it's coming forth in, in present time. So, what I do is I work with the man and we just, we just kind of go back. We follow the feeling, you know, where was the first time that feeling showed up in your life? Where do you remember it? Where this feeling, we get real clear on what the feeling is. When did you remember it? Oh, I was at 10. I was 10. I was at the dinner table and I didn't want to eat my soup. And my dad said, if you don't want to eat your soup, just leave this house and never come back. And I thought, oh my God, I'm not worth it. You know, I'm not valuable anyway. And that's the process that goes through. And it's very powerful. Wow. So, so you, that's one of the key things that you do with your clients is to identify that, trace it back. And then what, you, what do you do with that emotion then? What, what happens at that point? Okay. Um, the emotion helps us to identify the event. When we can identify the event, we can then um, verbalize the message or the belief that as a young boy, we attach to the event. And that message or belief is a false belief, but it's something that subconsciously we've carried along with us. So whenever we feel the same way, we have this strong gut response from when we were as a kid. It's irrational, right? It really doesn't make any sense. So from that place, we reframe the event because this is the deal. Data or facts do not have opinions and they don't have feelings. So I'm at the dinner table and I didn't want to eat my soup. And my dad said, you don't want to eat your soup, leave this house and never come back. Okay, that was the data, he just said that. He didn't say, you're not worth it, you're not loved, you're not important. He didn't say any of that. Whatever happened, it was his own stuff anyway, right? So what we do then is we separate the actual event from the belief and then we look logically at like, well, does that even make sense? 
would it mean that you're not important or you're not valuable or you don't have a voice because you didn't eat a freaking bowl of soup? No, it makes no sense. But as a 10 year old, that's how we made sense of the world. As an adult, that doesn't serve us anymore. So we reframe that event. What's true? Well, my dad really had a problem that day when he said that. I mean, that was stupid. That was his deal. What's true about you? You know what? I have a right not to eat something if I don't like it. You know, I don't need to, I don't need to eat stuff I don't want. I, I, I'm empowered to do that. Okay. So what then is really true about you? And we reframe the belief from, I don't have a voice in what I can say or do to, you know what? I freaking have a right and an ability and a voice and power and strength to ask for what I want or to, to pursue what I want or to decide what I want. And it just shifts. It changes everything. So that's interesting. Um, so that one event is transformed. But what about all the other occurrences in life and you know, uh, since that time that confirmed this belief that whatever maybe I'm not worthwhile or I, mm -hmm. I shouldn't ask for what I want or whatever. Mm -hmm. What about all those other events? Do they somehow collapse under the weight of the core event having been transformed? Or? They actually do. Oh. Um, they actually do because huh. basically from a certain point in life with a belief that we took on and it's important to recognize the ownership of I created the belief. I attached it. No one put it on me because then we also have the power and the ability to change the belief. I gave it one belief. I can give it another based on how I understand facts. Now we change the filter. So yes, we go through life believing we don't deserve something and okay, I'm not going to ask for it. I didn't get it. Oh, poor me or whatever. I don't know. Um, but once the, false belief or the misbelief is identified, then all the other instances can be shifted around as well. And it's like, well, yeah, that was dumb. I had every right to do that, or I, sh I should have been able to do that. Changes the power. Wow. So uh, can you kind of give us an example of, you know, a client that uh, where this kind of thing happened and what, what occurred now that that belief was transformed? Like what was different about their their life or their action. Yeah. So an example would be uh, in order for the client to survive as a child, as a boy in his home. And by the way, don't use my example. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, uh, in order to survive, um, he was expected not to ask for anything. It was it was more proper and noble to just grin and bear it, to put up with whatever, to be grateful, I'll say for scraps or for limited amounts of anything, right? So then what happens, this guy's running a business, right? And in his business, he's, he's an entrepreneur, he's self-employed. In his business, he has these clients and they start asking him more. They ask, they ask of him more and more and more. And he keeps saying yes and yes and yes, because it's back from this belief of like, hey, you know, I just need to be appreciative of what I have. I don't deserve to ask for anything more. And it's wrong. It's wrong to do that. So when we correct that belief, he's basically able to say, stop to his clients now. Our agreement was X. I'd be happy to change the agreement to Y, but it's going to then require X amount of dollars or X amount of uh, a different type of contract. And so the man then takes power of his own life, his own business, and he's not in this mode of, I just have to put up with it and deal with it. So he becomes a much more successful businessman. He's more efficient. He's actually able to offer more to his clients from a stronger place in his life. Yeah, that's a great example. And I think one that probably a lot of, a lot of us can relate to because our, the relationship we have with our clients is uh, in some ways mirrored uh, from the relationships we've had, you know, in, in our personal life that impacted us the most. So um, uh, as somebody who is you know, watching this might be interested in working with you, um, you offer a lot of content uh, on your Facebook page. You know, you have videos, you have 
articles, um, and so I encourage people to go check it out. Uh, what's one of the ideas that you've uh, shared in your videos or articles, let's just say this year or whenever that you remember that you, that, you know, what's, what's one idea that you felt like really um, made a difference for people or that, that really got more of a, more of an engagement from, from your audience. And I just want to give you a chance to share some ideas because you have a lot of, lot of thoughts on, on transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just think for a moment. What's really important is to understand that when you and I react to something, not respond, but react, you just have a gut response. So something happens and there's this reaction and it's filled with emotion, okay? It's a clue, there's something that's not right, okay? There's a clue there that if someone says something to us or someone does something, that's just, that's just data, right? It's like, um, they didn't call me back. You know, I called them, it was, told them it was important and they didn't call me back. And then the reaction is, oh my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. E either I'm angry at them or I'm feeling like I'm a terrible human being or something like that. There's way too much emotion in that. And when there's too much emotion, um, it's a clue that I am reacting from a place of wounding, from a belief that is not true about me in the world today. And so the shift becomes, it's important to respond. I mean, hey, if someone agreed to call me back and they didn't call me back, that's an accountability issue. And it's totally okay to call them on that and say, what happened? This was your agreement, this didn't happen. You know, tell me about it and work that out, right? And that response is done from a place of just even keeled emotion. It's not done from a place of anger. It's not come from a place of shame, like maybe I don't deserve your response. Um, and when we can work these things out and we can respond and communicate with each other in just a, an even leveled uh, state of being um, with not, without the emotional swings, we would become much more productive and effective in everything we do and how we communicate. Yeah, that's really, that's a great tip for both men and women. I think all of us have that experience of reaction and, uh, and just to be, to be, like you said, to be mindful of, Oh, wait a second. There's, there's something here to be worked through, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, speaking of reactions and something affecting everybody, I want to give you a chance to talk about um, your, maybe encouragement, support, advice. Uh, right now, as we're recording this, you know, the coronavirus is, is you know, really making an impact on all of our lives. Um, for some people, unfortunately, it's, it's physical health. And for others, for just about everybody, it's some kind of economic impact. Yeah. Um, relationships uh, also, because people are, you know, being at home more. And so, uh, yeah, any, any set of words of encouragement and, and advice for us during these times? Yeah, absolutely. Um, two things. One is to stay present in the moment. And what helps us stay present is to take the pause. Because this is what happens. Fear can get a hold of us, especially when there are many people in a hyper state of excitability around us. You walk into the grocery store and people are just filling their carts and they're grabbing everything and you just, you can feel it, right? And that, that excitability creates a sense of fear, which leads to panic, right? But if I choose to just pause in the moment, in the present moment, just choose to pause, I can then respond. I don't have to react. I can think. I can pause and I can decide what's my best course of action. What are my options available? Um, what do I need? Um, and we, we can put things into perspective. And it's all about living in the present and not living in the imagined future, a fearful future, a bad future, which let's be honest, I would believe 
98% of the time, our most fearful and imagined futures never come into being. But yet, if we let it, oh, there's just all this emotional energy and turmoil going on, and what a waste, right? Pause, get present, and then choose to take action. It helps. I love that. Thank you so much, Todd. Yeah. I really appreciate your work and your presence and uh, support of your audience and your community. So um, I want to encourage everyone who you know, find, found this beneficial, take a look at um, Todd's uh, Facebook page. He's very active there with videos and articles. So I'll have the link to that in the notes of the video. And also, of course, Todd's website and any other links, uh, Todd, you want to share, you can, um, we'll, we'll have that in there as well. So thanks so much, Todd. Um, and I hope people will reach out to you, especially men who would like your kind of one-to-one -one guidance. And actually, I'd love for you to say, how can, you know, what should people do when they're maybe interested in working with you? What's the next step? Yeah, absolutely. Um, on my website, uh, empoweredmencoaching.com, uh, you can reach me there uh, via email. Um, I also have a calendar. You can schedule a free uh, conversation with me. Right now, I'm doing free 20-minute calls for men to just kind of help them reset and refocus. And I think for the next few weeks, maybe month, two months, that's good. This is an important thing to do. So um, I am more than willing to help to help any man uh, who reaches out to me and contacts me, and uh, we'll figure out what, what needs to happen next. Awesome. George, before we go, I just yeah. want to thank you for your leadership. I want to thank you how you show up in the world, the community that you create. Um, I think it has a ripple effect and it creates a sense of goodness, grace, and calmness in the world. And mm -hmm. right now that's especially needed. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that time. All right, everyone go and check out the links uh, below the video and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Todd, for your work. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.